I think the the stories we hear are written from from the perspective of the victors. Like your particular kingdom, Bunyoro, offered a lot of resistance to the British rule. And thus it was decimated. And it is on purpose that Hoima, Bolisa, ETC were are actually not as developed because the aim was to write them out of history as part of the resistance. And I think it is the British, I think, have done an excellent job of this wherever you go, whereby they erase existing history and replace it with their own version of that history. I mean, you find West African artifacts in European history museums. Why, why can't you take them back home when they were actually stolen? You know, so I think there is that. And I think it's a very, I would like to link it to mastery. You know, culture has a rigid set of rules. We only pick what we want, right? I think that is the new modern age is that, no, it's the, indiv I don't know what they call it, individualism, you know, I am, I am, me, me, me. And freedom, I want to be feel free to do this and so on. But what is freedom? Is ultimate freedom in everything. Are you really free when you actually have ignorance on your side? I mean, there are certain things that are, we can't, there are cultural practices which were, some are considered barbaric, some are whatever. I mean, we, there, there are some which are extreme and today probably they don't fit because of, we've gotten more knowledge and so on. But for those societies, they actually made sense. They work. So unless you, looking from the outside into that society, you sort of don't, it, it, it's difficult for you to understand the context in which these rules were brought and so on. I mean, I, I will give you an example. My culture, I'm a Muganda by, by tribe. And then the most, my, my, most, my favorite question is asking people, what do, I, what do you identify as first? Do, that gives you a sense of what the person's perspective is. And I tell people, if a person tells you I'm Catholic first, everything will be seen from a Catholic lens. Like for me, I'll tell you I'm a Muganda first which means I'm seeing it from that lens. And I, I usually used to think, hmm, why am I saying this? Like, do I believe it? And so on. But then when rubber hits the metal, we actually find that where do, where, what's my fallback position for decision-making? What's my fallback position for my values, for my morals and everything? If I'm a Muganda first, it means I fall back to my Ganda culture as a basis for decision-making. Even in the modern age, now I may not expose that to everybody going around doing it, but it informs my decision making and the values I uphold. So I think, I don't think they are disconnected. I think they are tied, closely tied, because everybody wants to be like the Kardashians. But when you read them, they say a mother of four two girls with no talent turns them into a billion dollar, you know. Uh, you know, they've done their work. They've done what they have to do to succeed and survive in the world by, you know, by changing the face of reality TV. They, that's how they will succeed. That doesn't mean that's how I will succeed or how I want any of my children to succeed. In fact, I tell them, you know, you're going to school. There are three things I want from you. I steal from Jack Ma who says, I want my child in the top 30% because those people have time for other things. So I also, you know, I take that and say, I want you in the top third, top one third of the class. I want academic excellence. For me, that's my measure. Then I say, what else are you excellent at? Because those other areas of excellence are what gives you a stronghold in the world. Are you a good sportsman? Like I have my son going to Namibia. I've told him, by the way, uh, sports excellence, I want. But then I also want you to listen and learn about the religion which is Catholic, you're new, that's a Catholic school. So I want to hear what are you absorbing? What are you doing? What are you learning? So it's not just one dimension. I think many times we've tried to put everything in a single dimension, in a multi-dimensional and multifaceted environment and space. So that means that we have to go tunnel vision when actually, I agree on focus, but the baseline of that focus has to be a wide approach. And I, you know, I, we keep falling back. I keep telling people the village raises, the village raises the child. The child has a responsibility to come back 
to the village and pay back for all that opportunity and privilege that they got because of sacrifices some people made, whether you know it or not. And you can always see it, you know, as like we said, we're getting children whose demands are getting higher and higher, and you actually find they have no idea where these things came from. And when they look at your pay slip today and what you're able to do for them, they'll ask you like, how, how were you able to do this? Mm. You know, but yet it is a network of people that you're building. So I'm not saying the village is where you came from, but you have to build your own village of people who your own trusted village of people to help you raise the child because they will never, they will never tell you everything. So you need, like for me, I accept there'll be things my, my children cannot tell me, but then they better have aunties and uncles around them who are trusted, whom I also trust to be able to make a call on this. And it was baked into our traditional religion, by the way. So my, for us boys, you'd have a singer who would tell you about the ways of the world and how to understand women and how to deal with them. That singer was very, in fact, the Luganda saying is singer tewali mukazu wandi de tata. If you are not a woman, you'd have been my tata, my father, mm -hmm. one of my fathers, which essentially means her responsibility is actually to bridge that gap so that she provides masculine counsel even in our ceremonies she's the one who is asked by the, your father if you're a girl like uh-huh have you vetted and most people don't know their role but they would go do a history check what we call a background check on the families like do they have any hereditary diseases do they have luck you know what is their kind of thing like they would do the vetting of that but by discarding that aspect we also discard the background checks and knowledge and now everything is sexualized but really a lot of their advice and very good advice i've gotten is from somebody who, who who where our values align and we understand each other at that wavelength so i think they're not culture and in work they tell us network with your peers give to open source it's the same thing your open source community is the village and you give back because it gives to you in your work, try to up, uphold people. You know, wherever you go, I think the same values hold.